splendid dad will hear of the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. We brought nothing into this world and it is certain that we will carry nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Our Savior Jesus Christ acknowledged death and brought life and immortality to life through the last I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and of hell. Because I live, you will live also. And death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain, for the first things are passed away. Join me, my brothers and sisters in Christ, as we sing together our opening hymn, My Jesus, I love thee, I know that thou art mine. Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine, for thee all the follies of sin I resign, my gracious Redeemer, my Savior. first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing the crown on my brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, this now. I love thee in life, I will love thee in death, and praise thee as long as thou lendest me breath. Ah! 
be seated. Let us go to God in prayer and let us pray. O oh God, immortal, invisible, most holy and righteous God, today we turn to you in the sorrow and grief of our bereavement praying that we may find the strength we need in your sustaining grace so that even as we mourn the death of one whom we knew and loved, we may not be overcome by this trial, but we may hold fast trusting in your mercy and goodness. Assure us, O Lord our God, that death is not the end of those who trust in you. And may our hearts be so composed with the Holy Spirit that all fear and bitterness may be swallowed up in the light and peace you give to your troubled children through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, who by the Holy Spirit minister to us in our weakness and by the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, have given us the pledge of eternal life. Even now we pray, lift us above our present distress and sorrow and shed the light of your grace and glory upon us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we are met in this solemn moment to commend Ina McKetney into the hands of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who, o Son, Jesus Christ, is our Redeemer, by whose stripes we are healed and in whose name alone we have salvation. Let us then recall to mind the life of our dear sister as we at this time listen to the eulogy. The eulogy will now be read by our own brother, our local preacher, Brother Jasper Jofield. It's indeed a different time. It's indeed a time. It is now a time when we mourn, we grieve in a kind of silence, in a kind of uh, situation where it that seems not normal. I greet you this afternoon, Reverend Janice, Dr. Janice. The Reverend Dr. Janice Jack Watson, my brothers and sisters here on, on the internet, bereaved relatives, good afternoon. We are asked in Psalm 24-3 these two questions. Who shall descend into the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? And in verses 4 and 5, the answers are, He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, 
he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. It is against this background that we have that we can state further like the songwriter how sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It soothes his sorrows and heals his wounds and drives away his fear. It is because of these assurances that we can say with surety, should surety that our dear departed sister Ina McCracken Boxhill will dwell with the Lord forever. I believe that when Simeon and Isabel McCracken, parents of Aunt Ina, received their daughter on that fateful Saturday of the 20th, of the 24th of March 1928 they were overjoyed and she was loaned to us for 93 years and 6 months and as I often not say I must number my days I'll give you it in days that's 34,152 days. That's a very long time when we count it like that. Well, 93 years, we say, oh, that's just, that's just now. But when we count it in days, we see how long it has been. And we can say, I wonder if I would live that long. She was a mother a grandmother, a great grandmother, an aunt, a great aunt, a great great aunt. She was sister to five brothers and one sister. And that one sister was my grandmother, Paul McCracken Douglas. I am here to represent the Douglases mentioned in the obituary from Mount St. George and some in the United States. We who have fond memories of this neighborly, ambitious woman who wore such a charming smile and possessed such a, such a humble demeanor was adored by all. I call her Aunt Ina. Other people might, may have called her mother, or some of them might, might have called her auntie. But I call her Aunt Ina because she was dear to me. She grew up in Mount St. George, where she received her early education at the Mount St. George Methodist School. Later in life, she met and was married to a fellow called Frank Boxhill and they migrated to Trinidad where she produced two adorable children, Michael and Annie. In time, she became a proud grandmother of Giselle and Brittany and the great grandmother of Matthias, Noah and Kyle. While in Trinidad, Aunt Ina will periodically return to Tobago and she will never come empty-handed. There was always some special treats for us, her great nieces and nephews. She eventually returned home to, sweet, to home sweet home Tobago, the land she loved, and it was a joy to hear her speak because she spoke with such eloquence and intelligence. It was only last week that I knew that Aunt Ina was only four years 
was only four years younger than my mother. You see, when I was growing up, an auntie not come around. I used to think that she was the elder. Because she spoke with such a flair that people had to listen. Even my grandmother, I thought she was, I thought she was a, a little older in intelligence than my grandmother. But Aunt Ina was about 20 years younger than my mother, my, my grandmother. On her return to the Bagel, Aunt Ina was employed at the Kendall Farm School, where she served with distinction for several years. Aunt Ina was a Methodist from birth. For many years, she attended this church, and like many, she had her favorite seat. She sat over there. She, loved, she lived a good, rich, God-filled life. And it is certain that when death came, she may have sung with exuberance. Bold, I approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own. I believe that Aunt Ina has heard well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the eternal joy of the Lord. I have to say to the relatives gathered here and those of us who are mourning the loss of a wonderful woman that the Douglases in the United States, Cherry, my uh, uncle, we call him Cherry, Pearl and her children, Pearl is the wife of Ashton, deceased, better known as Dougie. Roberta and children, who is, the, who is the wife of, or was the wife of Alfred, deceased. My brother, Gart. My nephews, Andy, Andre, and Anthony, who regret their inability to be here have asked me to extend to the morning family members their sincere condolences and ask that you remember that God has promised his, cons his consolation and that Christ will return to effect the great reunion when we all will meet our loved ones again. I say to all of us, be blessed and remember the fond memories you had with Aunt Ina. God bless you all. And let me take this opportunity on behalf of the congregation here at Scarborough to extend deepest sympathy to the Boxill family and the immediate family of our dear deceased Ina. I pray that at this time and in the coming weeks and months, you will continue to experience the grace of God, that grace that is sufficient for you even in the time of your mourning. And I pray that God's arms will continue to surround you with his peace and his mercy even in this time of your bereavement. And so we pray that even now the word of god will minister to you and we will have sister anne the daughter will come at this time and she will read for us the psalm 121 i am not too sure um, which of the epistle reading was chosen 
Um, after the psalm, we will have the epistle reading, and then we will have the gospel according to John 14, 1 to 6 and 27. Come on. Psalm 121, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. I would like to say a few words on behalf of the elders, Mrs. Eunice Elder, her children, Pat, Colin, Dave, and um, Kathleen. On behalf of them, they are saying their mother, Mrs. Eunice Elder, called my mother, Cousin Ina. Cousin Ina and their mother had a very close and trusted relationship. Any significant event that occurred in their home Cousin Ina was the first to know. Mommy and Cousin Ina shared everything, food, cakes, everything. As children growing up, we could not travel anywhere unless we had a proper inspection and send off from Cousin Ina. I could remember when I came to the U.S., it was Cousin Ina who spent the morning with me, assisting me in packing my clothes and examining my attire. To the family, of Cousin Ina, her children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, cousins, nieces, nephews, we extend our heartfelt condolences. Okay, could you come up for the episode? The epistle, the epistle reading at this time. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. We have the epistle being read from Romans 8 from verses 31 to 39. Here beginneth, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for his all, how shall, we, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to be charged of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died, yes, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. 
know in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here endeth. Gospel is according to John chapter 14, 1 to 6 and 27. Glory to you, O God. If you are able, please stand for the reading of the gospel. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give it as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. As we remain standing, we will join in the hymn, O love that will not let me go. Thanksgiving for Ina. 
was the one of the services that the order of service was easy to plan. Because Sister Ina ensured that she left the hymns and most of the readings, especially the psalm that the psalms that she wanted to be read at her funeral service. And you will notice that we have chosen Psalm 23 which was one of the psalms and we will use it as a hymn, a closing hymn. If you notice the, the depth of the hymns that she would have chosen and we would know that people don't just usually choose hymns. Some would say that she had much time because 93, many of us would want to live to see 93 if Jesus doesn't come before. And so in living, she lived with God. And even in preparation for her death, she sang songs like, Oh love that will not let me go. And so briefly, I want us to focus on Psalm 23, even as it captures many of the love that is hidden and experienced and expressed in the hymns as it does in the psalm. And I pray especially that the psalm will bring greater meaning to the family even as they mourn the loss of one who they love dearly. Let us go to God in prayer. O oh love that will not let us go, we bless your name for that unending love. We bless your name that in living or in dying, if we live with you, we can, like the songwriter declare, all must be well. So minister to us through your word this afternoon. And so let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Psalm 23, one of her chosen psalms for this funeral service. Some know that this psalm is attributed to David. David is considered in the Bible as a man after God's own heart. It must be that David loved God very much because we know that God loves all persons. And so today, the psalm captures, even as we think of Sister Ina, God's sweet communion and companionship, a journey that lasts forever. It is David who is contending in the Psalm 23, that he cannot live without God. This Psalm is very intimate. It speaks about his personality and it speaks of the depth of the emotion David has for this God, an intimate God whom he journeyed with. And the text indicates what a joy he has knowing this God. Some who knew Sister Ina and her life lived with God. And even the hymns that we sang this afternoon would express the embracing of this God that Ina had. A journey a life experience. Some would have heard in the eulogy 
that she was a Methodist from birth. And we are reminded that Methodists are methodical and Methodists should be persons like David who love God with a deep love, a love that will not let God go. So here the text deduces that God is David's shepherd. Some may think about Ina, one who walked with God and say that she saw God as a shepherd. It therefore means that David was indicating that he was a sheep. And so if God is the shepherd and David is the sheep, David can also be alluding to the fact that as sheep, he cannot do without the shepherd because he knows that without the shepherd, he will stray from the path. That without the shepherd, life will be difficult. That without the shepherd, he would not have the protection protection that is needed throughout his life. But what is exciting about the psalm, even as we think of the life of Enoch, is that the life of the psalm and the intimate relationship with God expressed through the words of David, we see that David declares that this shepherd is a perfect shepherd. A perfect one because it starts by indicating the Lord is my shepherd, I have no want. It must be someone who has everything, everything that you can indicate you don't have any want. We live in a world that persons may say it's a gimme gimme world. I can recall somebody saying that they and somebody was interacting and the person was wealthy, whether a millionaire or a billionaire, and they asked the question, what would it do? When would you be satisfied? And the millionaire or billionaire said, if I get another billion dollars or another million dollars. And the person knew that that person would not be satisfied because they are millionaires, billionaires, and they're not satisfied. Here, this intimate relationship David has with this God says, I don't need I lack nothing because this God is sufficient. This God is the God who fills me up. We live in a world, my brothers and sisters, where we see persons have all kinds of things, all kinds of gadgets, but still they are not satisfied. A songwriter in a relationship with Jesus indicates, I rather have Jesus than silver or gold. What a meaningful relationship it is for someone to declare that Jesus is more important than silver or gold. David was indicating that with this God, he has this confidence that he lacks nothing. All of his life is interwoven and enwrapped in this God who is a perfect one. And the text goes on to indicate that this God leads him in good times. The text says, this God leads in still waters. Still waters here represents peace and tranquility. And I'm sure in Ina's life, even as she journeyed and had sweet companionship with God, 
she could declare as many would declare that she had still waters, peaceful times, and tranquil times. The text goes on to say, David indicates, he guides me into the right path. You see, when we have sweet communion with God, God never carries us on a wrong road. The road that we tread is the road we tread with God. So it's the right path. What is amazing about this text is that the text indicates that there is happiness. David experienced happiness as he journeys with this God. And you see, when you have personal relationship with God, you have this inner joy, unspeakable, some would say, and full of glory. You bloom and shine and blossom because you have the best thing in the world. You have a relationship with Jesus. When I think of David talking about his intimacy, I thought about a rose as the rose looks lovely, exotic, but even as you think of the lovely rose that some persons will give, rose has thorns. That brings me to the section of the text that David in his journey in sweet companionship with God experienced rough times, challenging times, but it is interesting in those rough times, David did not turn to the left or to the right. He secured himself in God. Still, in the challenges, David saw that God was gracious. David said, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. David is indicating that in the challenging times, because of God's presence, all will be well. I am sure Ina had challenging times. And when she had challenging times, I'm sure that she looked to the rock, Christ Jesus, our Savior. Today, as we celebrate the life of Ina, who would have chosen this psalm to be a part of her funeral service? The psalm concludes, as David indicates, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What an assurance that the walk with this God in this earthly life will go forth and will transcend into a bliss where the heavenly realm, the home of God, would be his. This can be a solace not just to Erna who would have, Ina who would have chosen this psalm, but to you and to me. Where would we spend eternity? What is our relationship with God like? For David, it was a sweet journey of companionship that lasts forever. I pray that we like David and all those who have faithfully loved God, we too will be able to say, yes, and I will dwell in God's house forever. Amen. 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 Let us bow as we reflect upon God's goodness. Let us bow as we again 
think about our lives and our relationship with God. Ina has passed from this life. We are still here. We do not know if today or tomorrow we die. Will we be able to say today, I will dwell in God's house forever. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you that Paul indicates that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things past, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else can separate us from your love. Help us, God, to embrace that unending love. So the companionship that we have with you or seek to have with you will last forever. Thank you, God, for the hope of heaven to be with you one day. Amen. And so let us affirm our faith in the Apostles' Creed as we stand at this time. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please take your seats for prayer. Prayers of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Praise be to you, O God, our Father who created all things and made us in your Im image for eternal fellowship with you. Praise and thanksgiving be unto you, O Christ, O Lord, our God, who have overcome the sharpness of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers and are now seated at the right hand of God the Father. Praise and blessing be unto you, O Holy Spirit, God, our comforter, who bears witness within us of our acceptance with the Father and have become the pledge of our eternal inheritance. All praise and glory, blessing and honor, thanksgiving and worship be unto you, O blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We bless your name for the life of Ina, whom we today lay to rest. We give you thanks for the joy and the blessing her life have brought to others, for her service to her generation in accordance to your will, and for every happy remembrance of her life. We bless you that your mercy and goodness have followed her all the days of her life, that now the trials of this world is over and that itself is past. Receive her into your perfect kingdom and bring us all with all who have lived and served you faithfully to the fullness of your eternal joy through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Let us all stand for the commendation. Eternal God, who have made us all and hate nothing you have made and have given your son for our redemption, we commend our sister Ina into your perfect mercy and wisdom. Eternal rest grant unto her and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. O Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We join in our closing hymn, and this will be followed by the benediction and the recessional sentences. The Lord's my shepherd. It's my shepherd. Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant make you perfect to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Please remain standing for the recession. We recess in this order, the, the minister, the casket, the immediate family, and then the members of the congregation. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. He knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass. As the flower of the field flourishes and the wind passes over it and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. 
but the mercy of the lasting to everlasting upon those who fear him and his righteousness to the children's children. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Merciful God and Heavenly Father, Father of all mercies and God of all comfort, 
Grace us of we pray from death of sin to new life of righteousness that when we shall depart this life, we shall be found acceptable in your sight through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Grant to the bereaved the consolation of faith in this time of this trial and distress. The blessed hope in the coming of your kingdom and the sustaining grace in the fellowship of your people and the steadfastness in the service of your name and the doing of your will. Support us, O Lord our God, all the day long of this troublous life. Until the shadows lengthen, the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over and our work here on earth is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us safe lodging, holy rest and peace at last. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation and purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. But this, this is my story, this is my song, I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture, words on my side, angels descending, bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. But this is my story, this is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. My Savior, I'm happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, I'm filled with His goodness and lost in His love. But this is my story, this is my song, I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, faith in my Savior, all the day long. Next one. To God be the glory, great things he has done, so love he the world that he gave us his son. Who yielded his life on atonement for sin And opened the life gate that only flew in so Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord Let me hear his voice Praise the Lord, praise the Lord Let the people rejoice So come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Oh, perfect redemption, and I'll purchase of God. To every believer, the promise of God. The vilest offender who truly believes. That moment from Jesus, a pardon received. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let 
Let the people rejoice Oh, come to the Father Through Jesus the Son And give Him the glory Great things He has done Great things He has taught us Great things He has done And great or rejoicing Through Jesus the Son Not far on higher there's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way, to prepare us a dwelling place here in the sweet, in the sweet, in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. We shall sing, we shall sing on that beautiful shore. The melodious song of the west, and the favorite has sorrow no more. Not a sigh for the blessing of rest. In the by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sea, by and by, and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore. To our bountiful Father above, we will offer a tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love. And the blessing that our Lord gave in the sweet, in the, in the sweet, by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet, by and by, and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what need that strength we bear. All because we do not carry. Everything to God in prayer. How we trials and temptations in the trouble anywhere. We should never be discouraged. Keep it to the Lord in prayer. And we find a friend to Find the solace there. 
When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks to turn a bright and fair When the Savior of shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there, I'll be there When the, when the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder Yonder I'll be there on that side, on that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the sky, and the roll is fall up yonder I'll be there, I'll be there. When the roll is fall up yonder. Yonder I'll be there Let us labor for the master From the dawn to setting sun Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care Then when all of life is over And thy work on earth is done And the road is called up Yonder I'll be there When the road is called up Yonder When the when when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. Why on others thou art calling? Do not pass me. Calling, do not pass me by long, O Lord. Long, O Lord, I spurn thy pleading and thy love to me. Heard thy voice, but lived on me. Now I turn to thee, Savior. Savior, blessed Savior, hear my humble, hear my humble cry. Why on others thou art calling? Do not pass me by. Let me at, let me at thy throne of mercy. Find, find a sweet relief, kneeling there. There in the contrition, held my own belief, Savior, Savior, blessed Savior, hear my humble, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by trusting, trusting only Do not pass me by Thou the spring Thou the spring upon my comfort More than life to me Whom have I on earth beside thee And whom in heaven but thee Till I reach the 
stay in the garden with him. Family, no the night around me be falling. And he bids me go to the voice of war. His voice to me is calling. And he walks with me and he's gone with me. And he tells me I am his own And the joy we share as we carry there Now the has ever known If we meet Okay God, God be with Is not my final goal, but until then, my heart will go and say. 